My name is Josh Hassenfuss. I'm a landscape construction specialist for the trustees. And um, we're here today at the Crane Estate Rose Garden um, that we're working on a stabilization project on and just finished the fountain reconstruction, uh, both with Consigli Construction. So as landscape construction specialist, I work with the project team at the trustees and various other statewide colleagues to put the details of the work together um, and scope the project and then work with the contractors through various partnerships um, to execute the work and also work with local stewardship staff on the self-perform uh, work that we do. So this fountain was reconstructed this uh, during the winter months actually by Consigli Construction. It's a uh, reconstruction of the fountain that was here and um, some very unique form work to match the, the details of the, of the coping. Um, and it's awaiting backfill in the coming weeks and also some, some, um, some coloring and sealant in the basin. Morning. Morning. I'd like to introduce Jason Boucher from Consigli Construction. He's the mason foreman working on the Rose Garden concrete stabilization. Morning. My name is uh, Jason Mason. I'm a mason uh, foreman for Consigli Construction. Um, I'm taking on the, the nice task of fixing all this concrete here from the Crane Estates. Um, you can see behind me right here, I started a process. This is um, there's different phases. Here's a finish. And this is the intermediate level right here. And this is the beginning over here. The first coat. And this is scarifying stages. And then I'm adding layers as I go. A little bit of art to it. It's quite the, the challenge, but I'm up for it. I think it's pretty fun. This is a beautiful place. It's an awesome, awesome office to have. I love working in here. I'm from uh, Sturbridge, Massachusetts. Um, I started this when I was 19. I got into masonry. I uh, met a guy. He said, hey, you want a job? And I said, sure. If I knew what it was, <laughs> mixing concrete and mud for him, that's quite the job. Uh, it starts off in, when you're in this field. That's the early stages, and it's really tough. But as you, as you grow as a mason, you start learning things and you adapt and I specialized in restoration work. I worked for a company called Monaco Restoration in my early days and I worked on a lot of uh, the old churches in New England and all the old like statue work and doing a lot of patches and intricate artwork dealing with masonry. So um, I, I fit right in here. This is, I love doing this type of scope of work here. Um, trying to bring back the beauty of this place. It's got a lot of beauty to it. Uh, People just see a you know crumbling old concrete garden. I think it's gorgeous. I love the way it looks as a ruin. Um, I think what we're doing here, stabilizing this place, it's going to be great for the generations to come to enjoy this place. And uh, I'm honored to be part of it. What do you what? Do, how did you find the concrete in, in particular? Mr. Crane built his factories out of concrete and steel. What what have you found since you come here? So I can't take credit for that. Uh, my friend, dear friend of mine, and also basically a mentor of mine, uh, Bob Levitt, he did all the research on this project. He's been working here with the Crane Estates for some time now. He had to basically shop around all the different quarries, the different cement yards, and come up with a formula. He had to search all different kinds of stone. There is at least, um, if you can see here, there's a variety of stones all through this to match because what's hard for a restoration project today is definitely in the sand and in the gravel and in the stone. To, uh, because quarries constantly shut down, they change, they come from different areas. So to get a matching stone is a daunting task. And Bob Levitt, he took it heads on and he nailed it. He uh, did a lot of work, a lot of research, and he made my job much, much easier. So I can't take any credit for that. That was all him. He, he found the, uh, the exact matching sand, the exact matching Portland, and all the different stones that we have that we get to show here. And um, once the colors are added, uh, I challenge a lot of people to come uh, take a look and see if they can find these patches because some people walk right by them. So 
that's a that's a good feeling for as a mason and a restoration specialist if if you're able to do that if someone can walk by your work and not see it that's what we want that's in the end we don't want to highlight what we're doing we want to be able to have it blend and you can walk right by it so what we're looking at here is this is probably the in the middle phase of res restoring this particular column these columns here have come-alongs on them, if you notice, and I had to anchor to the giant retaining wall that's behind us. The reason being, these columns were out a foot and a half leaning. We were about to lose them. And so, in, in order to get these to come back, I had to break down the concrete down to the bare bones of the rebar, take the come-along, bring it back plumb, and then slowly start my process in building in the patchwork. What you're gonna, what you see here is, inside here there's what we've created where staples made from rebar with epoxy. That will hold this column for us as we patch. And then this here, we have this for grip. This is all stainless steel wire mesh that is added for strength fencing. We anchor it in, so each process, each, each level of patching, I add this, and then we put a layer on. So it's a slow process. So that is this process here. Uh, next phase on this will be right here. You can see the bottom here. Filling in all the mesh, coming in, We're keeping it rough. You want it rough, you want to have it scarified. So you can see the edge here, this is a finished edge. Here you'll notice that you take a four inch grinder, we had to cut it nice and straight. You want to have a nice straight cut so that when you patch in, there's no voids and no, no access for water to get in, come in and it's got a nice bond. So this is ready to go for the finish. Up here is the finished result. We have a patch that starts from around the corner here, all the way from here, and it comes up to here. So to get to this point, there is a lot of work, uh, but I think we reached the goal what we're looking for here a lot of people walk by this area and don't realize it was a patch so to get to this point the last step we put retardant on the concrete and you got to let it set for 20 hours and then you have to come back and within the 20 hours and you have to wire wheel or steel brush to expose all this aggregate stone and then you give it a nice rinse and then the final process is to layer in the colors so all these colors are added after they're they're hand mixed handmade and I got to use my I got to go by eye like every column has its own color this one definitely is a redder column than others there's some that are green some are black some are yellow so I have a process that I use I mix a certain amount of dyes in water and I just come in and I give it a wash every day and I gotta once it dries you can't see the final color until it dries so once it dries and gets where I want it and I'm happy with it I walk away so and there's your final result okay consider me a chef this is my kitchen right here <laughs> so this is all this is the recipe so we can start off with see how small the stone gets there's some areas some columns will expose this and some don't have it so you got to know the certain blends because if you add this and any other stones that don't fit into the patch you're gonna spot that patch a mile away so we have different size here we have a quarter inch I mean these are eighth inch these are quarter inch all the way up to a half inch size stone so all different style stones and everything and i actually have another black stone that's over there that was found by bob levette he found it in a quarry and it's the exact match if you look at these columns here they all everyone's different it's like they have different blends and some of what it is is certain exposures there's you can see the garden is a radius so as the inclement weather come in, the exposure from the sun, everything, it ranges on these columns in different areas. So having an artist background helps me because I have to notice different textures, different shades of everything, including with the stones. I can't just mix the same exact mixture for every column because then you won't have the uh, patch match perfectly. You, it'll, it'll just it'll be too much contrast and it'll stick out like a sore thumb so here's some of the wire mesh that we have rolled up you actually have to basically start off with this and sculpt with it you have to sculpt around you gotta uh, keep in mind you gotta have certain depths and um, 
certain tolerances with the stones because if you're using a very heavy aggregate and you put the mesh on very heavy you're going to have a real tough time filling, filling solid the whole entire patch so it's a learning process every time every column so there's a there's definitely an art to it but finding the right blend that's the key in every single one of these patches thank you for joining us on today's tour of the rose garden I uh, appreciate you taking a look at all we have going on with the construction project. Stay tuned next week for Beth Walsh, horticulturist at the Crane Estate, for her tour of the planting plant.